Man, I can't believe it. We're almost there. Christmas Eve is right around the corner. It is. Was it tomorrow? Wow. Yeah. So that brings us to today's topic. What is the most memorable Christmas Eve you've ever had? Mm. You know, when we were kids, we used to, you know, go out on adventures all the time. And I remember yeah. we would uh, often just find ponds that would freeze uh, and we would ice skate on them. Yeah. And it was always something I just enjoyed uh, during the holidays and, you know, just being out on the ice, just ice skating. Yep. I remember I, it, it was one Christmas day I got the, or the NHL uh, ice skates. I do remember. I can't that. remember what ice skates did you have. I had the the fancier black ones that were like more formed to the foot. So um, were they more like figure skating? Yes. Ice skates? Mine okay. were more like figure skating. Okay. Um, and they that, it kind of like limited how long you could ice skate because yeah. they weren't very. I just long. remember mine were chunky. They yes. were those big NFL like really awesome, really cool boot. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I remember doing that because I remember on our holiday breaks, we'd always go back there and this is when we lived in the Midwest in Illinois. So we would get really cold, like, you know, being below zero is just a normal thing there in the winters. Yep. So, uh, yeah, I, I do really enjoy the ice skating, except for that one time when I fell in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that was a scary, scary time. It's terrifying. It was like just starting to sun was just starting to set yeah it was late yeah it such was, a bad time it was late and we were we were making our way back home through the woods and uh yeah and you fell through about up to your waist and yeah I, I i didn't go all the way in so which was good and i was able to pull myself out you were very little i was so you kind of really pulled me out it was yeah um but <laughs> just to end on a positive note and for safety out there if you ever see a tree that's branches are into the water just keep in mind that the ice near the branch is going to be thinner because it, it has a tendency to move and moving water can't freeze as well. So thus the ice that forms around branches in the water is less thin or thick. is more thin, yeah. less thick. Yeah. So uh, if you're ever ice skating, you're into that kind of stuff and you're out there, just stay away from the branches hanging into the water. Branches and visible bubbles on the surface. Yeah, that's true. That is is well, yeah, another indicator. Too. Yeah. But yeah, I love ice skating and just uh, gotta be safe about it. Oh yeah. Well, we've got a present here. Um, and before we open it, uh, if you're not familiar with Tagmas, Tagmas is a show in which we've been opening up a present that was underneath the Christmas tree every day up until Christmas. And uh, we basically opened it up. These are Nerf blasters or you know foam tagging blaster type stuff. And we just kind of give our impressions and review and go from there. So I'll let you open that one. All Mr. Right. Mr. Uh, Snowman. Mr. Snowman. Give me a dream. Oh no, that's the Sandman. <laughs> Sandman. Oh, we got a battle pack. Battle pack action. What is that? What do you call this? Clash combat. What? The Clash Force combo. Clash Force combo. <laughs> Sounds like an 80s movie. It really does. Call in the Clash Force. Alone in the Clash Force combo. Battling. Uh, what's the guy in uh, John Claude Van Damme or whatever? How you say it? Van Damme. Jean Claude Van Damme. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Some movie he would be in. That was yeah him or possibly Chuck Norris. You Chuck know. Norris. Steven, Steven Seagal. Seagal. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this one uh, is a mix of three and four in the chamber, which is interesting. I don't know if I can get as far as. This looks like the, what do we do? The equalizer. The equalizer. Except they're not It's like, out of line. I think we still have an equalizer laying around. Yeah, there's one right here. Yeah, there you go. It's just a fatter one. Huh. <laughs> I just, I have to, <laughs> I just have to look at this and be like. <laughs> come on. Come on, like. Come on, Buzzy. It's a, it's a thumb. If you thought the equalizer was too short, look at this one. <laughs> it's just like, Ooh. I mean, but seriously, it's like the pull is almost longer than the actual handle. Mm. Yeah. However. Okay. Yeah, grips aside. Grips aside, uh, you know. If you have small children with extra small hands, not normal child small hands, like yes, kids have small hands. These are for the kids that have extra small hands. Make sure to give them one of these bad boys. I don't know what, are they naming each one of these blasters? I just see Clash Force on them all. They're, they all say Clash Force? They're all part of the Clash Force combo. God, that is so small. That's gotta be one of the tiniest grips. <laughs> I mean, 
one finger. <laughs> this has got a lot of prime though, surprisingly. Yeah, it's so weird. It's like, like <laughs> if your hand is that size, <laughs> you, are you don't have this much strength. No, like <laughs> really. Hmm. You taking you taking Zuru darts? What are you doing? Oh, I'm screwing up. I'm, I'm just I was so entranced by the gold. Hey, we're sorry, Busby. Um, and just full disclaimer, these were sent in from Busby. Mm. So thank you for sending these products for review. Jeez, that thing has a it, has a good pop. It does. I wonder what these are chronographing at, especially these little guys. Yeah. Oh, there, it's got some some oomph to it. Surprisingly, it does. It's just. And that is the long distance start, and we already scrapped the box, so I don't know how much. Oh, there's two, a, four, six, eight, ten. There's twenty darts. It says twenty-four. Oh, twenty-four pieces. So the four blasters, the twenty, 20 darts. darts. Yep. Yeah. Uh, looks like th these do suffer from the, the the glue the glue job, which I I've been told they have a they have addressed this uh, wild glue job that they had in some of these. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, look at this. This is back when it was like getting pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a grenade. Oh man. Yeah, it's. Hmm. They, they this was an issue with quality control that they said they took care of, but. Well, on the equalizers, I noticed that they were cleaner, they, much cleaner than yeah, darts. Yeah, so. the newer darts are better. Yep. Um, but you know. Like I always say, you know, if you're if you're buying darts at, uh, or if you're buying blasters at Walmart, you might as well grab a box of Adventure Force waffles, which, you know, it's got some oomph. Yeah, these these things do slap. And I haven't tried the Clash Combat or Clash Force number one, <laughs> number two, number three, and number four. Hmm. Top Prime, not too shabby. Oh. Ew. Very accurate. That was like the most accurate long distance dart shot I've ever done. That's the thing about these darts. They get a bad rep, but sometimes they do actually fire really straight. But the problem is like the fourth one you fire will not be straight. Yeah. So I wish I could name these. And you know what I would name them? What would you name them? Chaos darts. Because hmm. they are chaotic. Chaotic. Once they leave Th that Their barrel? flight pa pattern or their trajectory is just, it is chaotic. Like, sometimes it will hit. Sometimes, nope. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it's just, sometimes yeah. it's just like, it's just like, squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've seen rival rounds kind of do that, but you really see it with these ones. <laughs> All right, well, I guess uh, we'll take these blasters into the lab and get some chronograph readings and just kind of plink around with them and see... Uh, See how they look. Yeah. Let's, Let's go. Do it. All right. Clash combat. So we got to, we got a break in the weather out there. So I, I did take these things outside. Got some chronograph readings, as you can see here. Um, kind of standard. I mean, the value of this battle pack is really nice. So I mean, you're getting a ton of stuff. So with that in mind, I mean, these these numbers are all right. I also tried to get some. Uh, <laughs> some accuracy checks with these things, and I was not having any luck hitting anything with these blasters. And uh, I, you know, I tried, you know, double shot. I, I like the, it's really fun to double wield these things because you can actually prime them on, on the sides and whatnot, especially with the, the pole prime. But uh, yeah, even with the double shots, you know, with my dual wielding, I still was unable to hit anything. And uh, you know, I, I don't know. So I, I guess these things are not super effective with the Busby long distance dart at 30 feet. Uh, maybe if I had some Adventure Force waffles with me, I would have been able to hit something, but you know, I was just trying to use the Busby darts that were included because these were sent to me from Busby Toys. So I wanted to give it a fair review. So with that said, you know, thank you Busby Toys for sending these products in. I'm gonna have to put these in the category of if you're trying to offer, you know, a, a bunch of blasters for like some kids at a birthday party or an event or something, these are a good, you know, you can grab a couple of these packs and you can just pass them out. You know, these are these are basically blasters that you just hand out like, oh, oh, you want to play with our Nerf War and you don't have anything? Here you go, here. So I think that's where these things fall. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to discredit them or discount them because, you know, 
that, that that's the problem I see with uh, a lot of a lot of the stuff in general is you know like well that thing sucks for that particular thing I'm trying to use it for and it's like okay well th that means that means in that scenario it's not good for you good you know good you've identified that but uh, doesn't mean these things are completely not useful for other stuff now it, me as a parent you know looking to pick up some toys for my kids let's just say if I'm going to a birthday party and I need a present, I'm not gonna buy this for little Timmy, you know? I'll probably grab a couple packs of these because like, I don't wanna be responsible for how little Timmy plays with this thing. So you gotta, you gotta consider that stuff, you know? And that's the problem with, uh, I see how things get generalized as a whole, like, oh, the hobby, you know? Well, let's look at what the hobby encompasses. You know, you got, middle-aged man, you got, you know, 18-year-old that believes he's gonna grow up to be Jason Bourne, and you got, you know, granny, and just all these people that all fall underneath this umbrella that is the hobby. So you have to be mindful, you know, of of everyone out there, because in the end, you know, it, it is more fun if everyone's having more having fun. So, you know, a product like this, I can get behind in, in the idea that, you know, these are good for kids, you know. Th these are just gonna go into you know, once I start hosting my own events, my own wars and that kind of stuff, these are going in a bin for, go ahead, grab, you know, if you wanna show up and play, grab something out of there, let's play. Well, I'm Dr. Flux. I wanna thank you for watching today's Tagmas. As always, happy foam flinging.